Hello, I am the narrator. Before this episode begins, Maddie and Dr. Von Schneumann will be talking about Percy, the Sea of Monsters. And there are in fact going to be some spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, you still want to, do that first before you continue. Let the show begin. Percy is one of the main characters in this movie. He is a demigod, so he is half human, half god. In the movie, they call them halflings. So in the movie, Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters, they, him and his friends, have to make an epic quest to save their camp because the tree that kind of protects them is dying. And the only way to save it is to get the Golden Fleece, the thing that can heal any living thing. So they had to ride with these three women that have no eyes except for one, which they have to share. Um, then they have to sneak aboard on the enemy ship to look for their missing friend that was kidnapped, but he was nowhere to be found, so they flee deeper into the ocean so they couldn't be tracked and whatnot but were swallowed by the sea of monsters. Uh, while they were in the stomach they broke free and they went to the island where the cyclop a cyclops guards the golden fleece. When they finally took it the enemies were there and they took the golden fleece from Percy and his friends. In the very end, um, they untied themselves and uh, killed Ares, the god of war, again. So it was a little hard to figure out which story it matches up with the movie, but we think we found it. Uh, there are some changes with the adventure that he took and the character is a little different as well but it is as close as it can be and there is a little clip in the description of a part where Percy actually uses his powers since he's the son of Poseidon so he's like bah water all right doctor take it away thank you and now let's talk about the origin story Good morning, I am Dr. Von Schneumann, and we're going to be talking about the halflings, or in other words, the demigods. Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters takes part in the Greek mythology. The demigods are, they look just like people, but they're half human and half god, which makes them stronger and more beautiful bodies, and they tend to be taller and bigger than an average person. Since these demigods are almost always physically strong, they tend to be more heroic than just a townsperson, maybe like a blacksmith or like a farmer. The story starts with Zeus, actually, sleeping with a woman called Diane, um, which gave birth on that same night. When her father walked in, his name was Agricios, and he saw what was happening. Happening. He feared of the prophecy that one day his grandson would come and kill him. So he took his daughter and the son and put him in a wooden box and shipped him across the sea. Just let him float. But Zeus wanted his son to live. So he persuaded Poseidon so that the chest would land on the shores of a good kingdom where he can grow up. So, came true. The uh, Dion Diona and Persephone, her son, Persephone, that is incorrect, Perses grew up and 
they were living good, but the king wanted his mother all to himself. So by sending Perseus on a quest to his death was the only way he could get the, uh, Diona. By sending Perseus to fetch the head of Medusa, yes, the Medusa, the one that will turn men to stone, the single glare, single look, right into her eyes. So, Perseus set a quest to look for three women um, that have to share an eye and a tooth because they know where Medusa lays. These three women were called Gryi, I believe. And after Perseus took one of their eye and demanded where they can find where he can find Medusa, he eventually told him, get back the eye, and he started his quest onward to where Medusa is. On his way, he stumbled upon a god and a goddess who were more than happy to give him items to successively kill Medusa. They gave him a helmet of inv invisibility. They gave him sandals uh, so that he can fly. Gave him a sack so that anything was in it would stay alive, including Medusa's head, eventually. So, now that he has those, he flew all the way to Medusa's cave, where she slept. And, con convenience, she was sleeping. So he snuck up on her, and he went wah on her head. And he took the head, and he flew back before anyone noticed. On his way back, he got word that the king was harassing his mother. So, whenever he got there, he showed the king the head, and made sure that the king saw her eyes. And he was immediately turned to stone, like that. And then, um, him and his mother sailed to go back home. But on their way, they heard that this princess, this beautiful princess that he fell in love with, fat, was, had to be sacrificed to the sea of monsters. Um, but Perseus. Perseus, that's right, Perseus made a deal with the king that if he could kill the Sea of Monsters, then he would get the hand of marriage to this beautiful princess. You know, they got their deal, and Perseus, Perseus, how many times do I get that wrong? Okay, Perseus showed the monster the Medusa head, and just like that, turned to stone. He stopped destroying everything. And the king kept his word, so Perseus had a princess. And of course there's more to the story, but that's just where it stops here because that's kind of most of the details that resemblance the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. Unfortunately, this is the end of the episode. If you've enjoyed it, there are links in the description that go more into detail about this information. Um, please like and subscribe and have a nice day. Good night. This is the end of the video. End of the video. End of the video. Pew pew. End of the video. End of the video. Do this is the end of the video. Pew pew. Pew pew. Pew pew. Into the video, into the video, into the video. Oh, oh.